this video is embarrassingly overdue. It is an abomination. My heart, how late this video is in being posted. I have been crazy busy with work and I just got back today, this morning in fact from New Jersey where I was um, at a wedding. I was in a wedding for my oldest friend and so things have been crazy and I just have not been making as much time as I should be making to be making videos and even posting on my blog on Tumblr which I'm sure you guys have seen I have not been nearly as active as I should be on there with posting things but I have been reading a lot more than like I did all summer really I the amount of books I did not read over the summer frightens me because now I'm like 14 books behind on my reading list I think or my reading challenge rather and it's like stressing me out a little bit and I don't know if I can do it because hello it's the end of October I don't have much time left to not only read all the 14 books I'm behind but then to keep on pace for the rest of the year but I'm gonna try I have all my books pretty much set up for the rest of the year. I posted on my blog about how this month is gothtober month for me so I'm reading a bunch of older gothic romances and then I'm also going to read um, Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire or the Vampire Lestat Chronicles. I am reading other ones like Wilkie Collins' Women in White, um, some Edgar Allan Poe stories, and a couple other ones. If you want a full list of them, feel free to go on my blog sparkylovesbooks.tumblr.com and check those out. So that's going to be October. November I'm planning on reading a whole bunch of ARCs that I received that I still have not read yet. So they're not really advanced anymore but I still want to read them and give them full reviews uh, so that one, I can get back into the swing of fully reviewing all the books that I read and two, I can have all of those reviews on NetGalley and kind of really build my NetGalley account. So November is going to be full of ARCs. December I'm going to hopefully, hopefully, hopefully finish up some of these series that I am really, really behind on. It is um, starting to really pile up how many series I'm behind on so I'm going to be spending some of December doing that which kind of segues into what I spent all of September all of last month doing which was my September of sequels I donned it that for myself and I did okay actually I read six books in September all were sequels to books or series that I had finished a year ago maybe more than that or I had been caught up up until the most recent book that was released in 2015 and so I wanted to really get caught up on the series so that I one didn't see all the spoilers on tumblr all the time and two so that I would just stop procrastinating because the reason I didn't read most of these is because like they're the last book of the series and that would mean that the series was over and I was in a serious serious place of denial <laughs> with those series and I didn't want them to be over so I figured if I never read the last book they wouldn't be over but that's not really the way I should read I'm thinking so I'm trying to be like a mature adult about this and just finish off the book after all of these series my heart is just like it is frantic and it felt all of the emotions it could feel in September and it was a roller coaster but it was great and it was really it was a really fun month of reading actually these are the five these are the five books I read that were sequels last month of September um, this took a while because it's big but the rest of them I really kind of blew through so I don't know why I procrastinated so long on these I also read my book club book for September which was Codename Verity which was an outstanding book. It has just everything in it. It's incredibly well written and if you can get over the fact that it's got some modern writing styles in it, like some jargon and word choices that are modern and shouldn't be used in a World War II book, if you can get over that, um, it's just a fantastic piece of literature and it goes places I don't think you expect to go. You don't expect to read it and like be reading a thriller. <laughs> it's just really good. I will write, I plan on writing a full review of it as soon as I'm done with this video. 
So look forward to that. And without further ado, I'm going to talk about my September of sequels. So the first book was End of Days by Susan E., which was the last book in the Penrin and the End of Days series. I started with this one because I knew it would be the fastest and I really just wanted to start getting going on reading some books, getting into the swing of reading and reading fast. And these are have always been so readable to me. They just are fast paced and something is always happening. And like even like five pages in, so much has happened already. And so I started with this one. It did not disappoint. It was amazing. Penryn really stood out for me in this book. She really rises to the occasion, like, I can't tell you why because I don't want to spoil it for you, but I think she does some things that are really heroic and she really steps up to the plate, but also her mom. Her mom shows some parts of her that show that, like, even though she's really crazy and does some really kind of awful things, it's usually in the best interest of her kids and she really really maybe understands uh, Penryn and Paige more than Penryn thinks that she understands them and she ends up being a real hero herself too so yeah and we find out a lot about Rafi's background and I think you're supposed to feel like Rafi maybe is not quite as like knight in shining armor but that didn't really happen <laughs> Even though he has kind of a troubled past and did some things and made some choices, like, they were all, to me, they were all understandable. I didn't really feel like he had any bad parts, <laughs> which I think is why I love him so much. He's supposed to be like a bad boy angel, but really he's just, like, not human. But just because you're not human doesn't mean you're bad. And I think that's the whole point of the story is that, like, even though Rafi and Pennon are supposed to be on opposite sides, they're finding that... The prejudices that they've been told about and the prejudices of their race's history is maybe not founded on truth and they have this relationship that is full of respect. The affection that Rafi sort of unwillingly has for Penryn is so romantic to me because like he he loves her in spite of not like the fact that he shouldn't love her. He he does it no matter, like, he tries not to because he knows it can only end poorly for both of them, but he does it anyway. He actually can't help but love her, and I think that's just so, it's just so sweet. And there are some times with them that made my heart stop, and oh my god, and yeah, you will cry, you will scream, you will throw the book, you will hold the book tightly, you will put it in the freezer like Rachel did with Little Women for Joey. Yes, I just made a Friends reference. I'm in the middle of watching Friends for the first time. I apologize for that, except I don't because I know everybody loves Friends. I will not be writing a full review of it because I'm pretty sure it would just be a bunch of random letters going ah blah blah blah. Just know that I gave it five stars. It was a great way to conclude. It didn't rush itself. It really built up and like the final scene lasted a long time and it it tied everything up without tying it up so much that you're like, leave some mystery in it. Like, there's some mystery in it. You don't know everything, which is fine. You don't need to know everything. I know we want to because we're fangirls or fanboys, but we don't always need to know everything. So it was just really good. The next one was Burning Kingdoms by Lauren Stefano. It's the second book of the Interment Chronicles. Um, it came out in March, and I just have been putting it off and reading other things instead. But I finally got around to it and it was really easy to pick up even though it had been a long time since I read the first one. I remembered everybody's name and everything that had happened. Um, Lauren does a really good job of reminding you what happened in the first book without spending like the whole first chapter telling you what happened in the first book. So she does a good job of reminding you what happened without being annoying about it. And I really like the relationships in this book. Basil and Morgan are really sweet. They're really just, like, there's not much to them, but that's okay. Like, they're not that deep of a, of a romance, but it still is a meaningful romance. It, it doesn't have any, like, profound confessions of love that are, like, crazy long and epic. But that's okay. Like, I feel like I don't always need that. Sometimes I just want something that seems, like, realistic and simple. And Basil and Morgan are like that. Like, the females in this relationship, I liked... All of them, I was like, yeah, 
go girl! Morgan and Penn, for example, they were best friends. They were there for each other, but also, like, called each other out on each other's shit, and also kind of figured some stuff out together. It was just a really good relationship, um, just in general. And then the new character, Birdie, also comes in. She's really great, too. She also reinforces the whole, like, girl themed. There's not really, it's not men-centered really at all. It's really fem feminine driven and that's really cool. But other than that, it was kind of just like a meh book. I feel like this book is just a setup for what's happening in the third book. Like the first book, we had the introduction to the world of internment and we had um, the rules of it and we had the big thing happen, you know, with them leaving the sky and coming to earth and that was big but now this is just like in the middle this is just like they're on the ground just waiting and nothing really happens like most of it is spent inside a house with Morgan just like overthinking everything and and Morgan's supposed to be like a heroine in this book but she doesn't do anything except listen to other people but she's a really like not active heroine and that was kind of annoying so I think I ended up giving this book three stars because I, I recognize that it's a setup book but that doesn't mean that it was it was necessarily good. And I really do like her writing and her imagination. Lauren Stefano. she also wrote the Chemical Garden trilogy and I think both worlds that she created are just incredibly imaginative and inventive and original. So I'm gonna keep going with this but um yeah eh, it was all right. The next one was The Retribution of Mara Dyer which is the third and final book in the Mara Dyer trilogy by Michelle Hodkin. I have to say this book took me by surprise. I thought I had it figured out and I didn't and Michelle Hodkin did a really good job of keeping the mystery of, of not connecting the two storylines fully. Like you don't quite understand what the connection is. You, you kind of have a clue but you don't really know exactly what the connection is between the past and present storylines until kind of near the end so that was really cool. Jamie and Mara's relationship, I'm still not quite sure about it. I'm not quite sure if they left off on good footing or not. I love Jamie though and I love Mara and because I love these two characters so much I want them to get along and never fight and never ever do anything. <laughs> so I'm really frustrated by that how it ended because I'm not sure if they're on good terms or not. And then I'm not quite sure about other particular parts of the ending. The way it ended is really cool. It's just like I can't tell you because it's so, it would give it away, but it circles. Like, the way it all circles together is so, so, so cool. It's just a really inventive way to tell a story. And apparently inventive is, like, my word of the day because I think that's, like, the fourth time I've used it. I love the story itself. It's so weird. Like, it's, it's dark, but not dark in, like, a horror slasher sort of way. It's just like, oh, ooh, ooh, it kind of you're not expecting it to be that dark. Like the stuff with oh, where Mara goes, poor twisted Mara. Oh yeah, I love her because she's so twisted and gangly um, and tormented. <laughs> I feel like she's tormented, Noah's tormented, Jamie's tormented. This book torments the reader. That is the theme of the book is torment. I have no complaints about this book, honestly. I know that I said that it went places or it ended in a place I didn't quite understand and I want to know more about but I know that like I said earlier you can't tell your reader everything you got to leave some of it up to the imagination so I'm okay with it I'm gonna let it go I know I've said this before I didn't read this book for Noah and Mara but I can understand if you are reading these books for Noah and Mara I'm sorry about your feelings because they will be thrown all over the place in this book and that's all I will say the next one was The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey which actually kind of took me a while to get through it, I'll be honest. There was so much of Ringer in this book and I really wish that there wasn't. <laughs> it was so irritating how much Ringer was in this book. Like I feel like you could have gotten the point across about uh, Ringer's purpose without having spent so much time with her. I get what's happening and the sort of conspiracy behind it all and um, her journey is important. It's like incredibly vital but I feel like you didn't need as much ringer to, to, to say so. But other than that, like, the hits just keep coming with these books. Like, you thought, again, you thought you knew everything and you just didn't. You just didn't know everything and 
This was an explosive, like, crazy book, and I really liked it. There are some really memorable Cassie lines in it. But Evan was still really good, and so was Ben. I think I actually gave this one, like, three and a half or four stars out of five. I gave the first one five out of five because it blew my mind. It was not expecting it to be what it was. I kind of knew what to expect this time. I knew that Rick Yancey was going to maybe not keep things the way they were and he was going to give you a lot of twists and turns. So I, I kind of prepared myself for that. Mind you, I still was surprised. I was just kind of a little bit let down by this one, but I still had major roller coaster emotions happening. So I think I did give it four out of five stars, but it lost a star because it just... I don't know. It just wasn't as powerful as the first one to me. I really think it was just Ringer. Like, if there wasn't so much Ringer, I wouldn't be so disappointed. But, yeah. He manages to, in a small amount of time that you spend with Cassie and Ben and um, Dumbo and Poundcake and everybody, like, you manage to really have a lot divulged to you about the world that's happening around and unfolding unfolding all around them. He does a really good job of, of um, making a lot happen in a little time, but just less ringer, just less ringer please next time. Last but certainly not least, City of Heavenly Fire. This was the one that I was like, I can't read the last one. One, because it's so long, and two, because then it's really gonna be over and I don't want it to be over. This book got me very, very emotional. The tie-ins to the Infernal Devices were very, very cool, I must say. Oh, that was the other reason I stopped reading. I got, like, through the first chapter with Emma, and I realized I had no idea who the hell all these people were, because I hadn't read the Infernal Devices yet, so I stopped reading this book, read all the Infernal Devices book, and then came back to this. So, yeah, it's been a long time coming. It was good. It, like, I kept plowing through it, and I was like, oh my god, there's no way I'm gonna finish this, and then I finished it in, like, three days. A lot happens in this book, and you meet a lot of new people, and you meet a lot of familiar people from Infernal Devices, and who are going to be in the Dark Artifices, and it really sets up a lot. I already had my my heart attached to this book, so I think that like no matter what, I was going to like it. So I don't really have anything to analyze about it. I just I really enjoyed it. It was just good fun to read, and it was really like it just took me all over the place, and I just enjoyed it. Just plain all enjoyed it. So yeah, it was good times. <laughs> five out of five stars. And that's all of them right now. I'm finishing up the Serena Legacy. I'm not quite sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it's the Mermaid books by Anna Banks. The Of, po of Poseidon, Of Triton, and Of Neptune books. So I'm finishing up Of Neptune right now, so that'll be the last sequel that I do before December comes. Um, and then I'm gonna read the Magnus Chase book that just came out because I haven't read it yet because I suck at life, at reading life specifically. I won't be doing a full review of any of these because really they're just sequels to, to books that um, I've already wrote full reviews about. And other than that it was just a lot of emotions and I don't like writing reviews about just feelings and feels. I really want to write a review if I have more than just like exclamation points to say. So I'm not going to be writing full reviews about any of these. So that's it. Um, subscribe to the videos for more. Give me feedback. I love feedback. Let me know what I'm doing. And talk to me about these books if you read them. I love talking about the feels. And that's it. Happy reading you guys.